everyone, it's Justine. Welcome to day three of my Cricut series. If you're new to my channel, just a quick word, I am normally a stamping and paper crafting tutorial primarily focused on card making and that's what my channel is all about. However, I've had tons of questions about the Cricut machine and how I use it in my everyday life as well as in card making, so I thought I'd do a little series. So for those that are returning subscribers, just know the regular tutorials will be back next week. Now I'm a teacher and I love to make things with my Cricut, from cards to iron-ons so I can have really funky t-shirts based on school occasions, also really like puns. Um, I also love to make things for my bulletin board and this is one of the reasons why I decided that the Cricut Explorer was the best machine for me. Not only do they have a millions of projects on there, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but tons of projects, tons of images, and for that really low subscription fee, you can have access to nearly all of them, which makes my life really easy. Now today I'm focusing on home decor. I wanted to show you a couple of items that I've already made uh, using my Cricut Explorer, and then we'll get into how I make them. So one of the things that I made for my mom, which I thought was super cute, is the My Kitchen, My Rules. I made this in vinyl in white, gold, and silver. This was found on the Cricut Design Space as a kitchen quote, and I thought this was really great. Also here in the photo, you can see that I have also created several cutting boards for friends and families. That Another thing I love to do is making custom items. So I made my parents' dog, this Lola, um, vinyl on this metal box that I purchased at Michael's. It's cut in uh, vinyl that is glitter. So I got some pink glitters and she's a girl and uh, we had that done there. And so there's so many possibilities of what you can make and all of those really cool sayings that you see in the home decor sections of things like TJ Maxx, Michael's, um, Hobby Lobby, whatever. You can make your own, customize them to your own tastes, your own colors, your own home decor. So they're really, really fun and the possibilities truly are endless. So yesterday I mentioned that one of my favorite sites to use, aside from Etsy, to find things that I really want to put is designbundles.net. So I'm gonna have a video, a link below in the video description. And if you shop through there, I would really appreciate it because at no cost to you, I get a small little store credit so I can use these for future videos. And here, you can really just put anything in. So if I put in home decor bundle, for example, you'll see that for very minimal prices that can be in your own currency, you have a ton of different options. So if you want farm themed, you can click on this and you have all of these different fun sayings that have to do with um, the farm or laundry or things like that. And you can really find an endless amount of things on here. Now, not only that website, you can also go on the Cricut website and you can also type in, for example, things like laundry and you'll see that all sorts of things come up like laundry today or naked tomorrow, laundry sucks, all these different things that you can make a picture to hang in your laundry room. So they do have a ton of different options. So you can make things like subway tile signs, you can have um, images, it's completely up to you how you want to do it. So I wanted to show you how to import something that you purchase on here. Now one thing that's really cool about using vinyl when you're using it is that it comes in permanent and removable. So if you're using something like a frame here, then you can go ahead and use the removable one if it's something that you think I'm only going to use this this season or for a short period of time. Or you can put the permanent one on there and then it's going to stick and really stick on there. So that's something that I would use that I'm going to have on the wall all the time. But let's say I have a little thing on, I don't know, my buffet table when you walk in the house and you want to change it per season or things like that, absolutely can do that. Or if you want to have a little sign with your Wi-Fi password that might change, the removable vinyl might be something that you want to use. So on Design Bundles, I went ahead and I purchased this Inspirational Quotes Bundle that was really gorgeous. And I'm going to now download the files. I'm gonna show you how to import them into Cricut Design Space. So I'm gonna click the zip file. And I believe that majority of computers now, that's not really an issue to open without having third-party software and things. I think they just open, I would, at least with Mac they do. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go into my Cricut Design Space. And again, I could have chosen something out of the easy access. I'm gonna hit the upload button, upload image, 
brows. And then I have my inspirational quote bundle here. And it has a whole bunch of the things that I have. And it gives you a whole bunch of different file options. You wanna click on SVG, it's just the easiest. That means it's a cut file. And I'm going to import it. And then you can save it under any title or tags that you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the image. And you'll see that the quote says, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. And I have my width and my height here. So I'm going to be using, so I'm going to be using this frame here. So using my Cricut mat is my favorite method. This is about 12 inches by 18. So I know that I can't have my width bigger than that. I don't want it the full 12 inches. I want to have some space around it. So I think I'm going to make it 10. And then I just got to make sure that the height of it at 14 inches works. So as I said, this worked out to be about 18 inches, so that's more than fine. So this is the frame I'm going to be using. And I now have my image set at 10 by 14.5. And I'm going to hit that make it button. Now I of course could go in if I wanted to with the Cricut design space and things like that. If I wanted to have things that were different colors, I could do that too. I could layer them on and things like that. So it tells me here that I do need the 12 by 24 mat, which I'm gonna take out right now. I'm gonna hit the continue button. And for vinyl, it's not like iron-on. I don't need to have the mirror image because I am gonna use a transfer sheet to pick up the vinyl and transfer it onto the frame. So it doesn't need to actually be that way. I'm gonna set the dial on my Cricut to vinyl. It's all ready to go. Now what I love about buying Cricut brand, I mean there are other brands out there, they might be cheaper. Um, don't quote me on this being the best price. I know that if you're a Cricut Easy Access member, you get a percentage off your purchases, which is really nice. Um, you can get them on Amazon and all sorts of things. But the nice thing is that if you use the Cricut brand, you know that your default settings on your Cricut are going to work properly. I love the fact that the design on the back tells you what it is. This is permanent premium vinyl, which means that when I put it on my frame, it's there to stay. Um, I know that um, I have the grid lines on the back for easy cutting. Okay, I can go ahead now and I know my image was maximum 14 inches, so I know where to cut it be about there so I don't waste anything and I just find personally that I'd rather use the brand stuff now you can go ahead and experiment and buy other brands or things like that but as I said there might be growing pains there might not be you might find some really great vinyl out there for a cheap price all right so I'm just going to place this here down onto my Cricut mat now it is going to be liner side down, which means that Cricut, the Cricut writing is gonna go on the bottom. And I'm just gonna smooth it out here so that I don't have any major bubbles. And one of the ways that I can do that as well is by using my scraper to get all this air out. Okay, so the Cricut's all ready to go. It's got the arrow. And then when the computer connects properly, then it's going to have the Cricut button light up as well, and it's all ready to start cutting. So now that my Cricut is done finished and finished cutting out this quote to put on the frame, I'm gonna go over to my craft table to weed it, and then I'll show you how to transfer it onto your home decor piece. All right, so I'm now going in. I have everything on my flat surface here, and I'm gonna grab my weeding tool from Cricut and I'm just going to lift up the corner and I'm going to lift until I start to see where the letters are going to pop up. And I like to use my scissors while I'm doing this. I get really messy and you want to take away all the things that are around the letters so that the thing that you're going to be placing on your home decor sheet is the only thing on this wax paper or this paper that, you know, is on the back of the sticky stuff. 
So I'm just going to very carefully go through and you really when working with a piece like this want to be using your scissors at the same time and cutting away small pieces at a time because the bigger this excess sheet that you're taking off gets the more chance it's going to start sticking to things that it shouldn't. Now I realize it is difficult to see because you're kind of filming white on white, but what you want to do is you want to go in and remove all the insides of letters like the inside of a letter O or the inside of a letter D, anything that you don't want to be on your frame when it is all done. So when you're all finished with that, then you're all ready to go with your transfer paper. Now what I've done is I've taken the transfer paper and I've peeled off the plastic sheet and I've laid it straight down onto my vinyl. And the nice thing is, is you can see through it so you know where you're placing it. And if you place your grid paper properly, then you're going to get straight placement every time. Just really depends on how you get it on there. So I'm going to go ahead and just peel off the backing of this. And you may need to use a tool here, a scraper tool or the back end of your weeding tool if any of the pieces are still sticking to the old vinyl paper that was on the back. So I'm slowly peeling this off, making sure that nothing is staying on there. This is a really easy time for things to rip and tear. So you just want to pull things very easily, staying close to the paper as possible. I always try and keep my fingers on the words as I'm going through. And this transfer tape you can actually use multiple times before you can't use it anymore. Um, so just definitely keep that in mind that you could store it back on this sheet of paper and you can use it for another project. I'm now going to grab my frame and I'm going to kind of hover the vinyl over top. I apologize my frame just isn't big enough on my camera to get the whole 18 inches of this frame in, but I'm going to try and get it as close as possible to the middle. And I didn't do the greatest job of lining up my words with the grid, but it's not too bad. So I should be able to do it nice and straight. When I put it on there, all I'm going to do is I'm going to rub my fingers all over the words, try and get it to really form a bond on the frame itself. And I'm going to slowly peel back that transfer paper again using my weeding tool the back of it there just to ensure that everything is on there properly. Now I really like to peel slowly and I keep the vinyl the transfer sheet very close to my frame and peel while pulling down and this is the technique that I find the easiest when pulling vinyl away that it doesn't just keep lifting up your vinyl over and over again. So keeping that transfer sheet flush to the surface and peeling downward really helps. Now, if I'm doing a large image and it's easier to peel from the side, of course you can do that also, but this is just the technique that I find to be the easiest. 